I'm succulent expert and author Deborah Lee Baldwin. This video presents the agave section of my best-selling book, Designing with Succulents. You'll get a good basic understanding of agaves, learn how to select and grow them successfully, and you'll see 30 beautiful varieties in gardens and landscapes. Agaves lend a sculptural element to landscapes and make good firebreak plants and security fences. They're native to the Americas. Large agaves store enough moisture to get by on rainfall alone and thrive in nutrient-poor soils. Scalloped patterns on an agave's leaves are known as bud imprints, and they're caused by spines and teeth pressing into the flesh of inner leaves before they unfurl. Sharp points at leaf tips and along the leaf margins of some agaves can make the plants treacherous. If this is a concern, snip a quarter inch off the tips to blunt them. Most agaves want sun, the more the better, in all but desert areas. Like most succulents, they do best in coarse soil that drains well. When fully mature, agaves flower. All but a few types of agave bloom once and then die. This may take as many as 25 years, depending on the variety, but it will happen. And when it does, it can be quite a show. Flowers along the stalk turn into many plants called bulbils or seed capsules, depending on the variety. Only the mother plant dies, in many cases, notably with agaves in the Americana species. A litter of pups carry on. When you see an agave surrounded by miniatures of itself, those are its pups. You may be happy to get free plants, but keep in mind the larger the agave species, the more likely its pups may be a problem. Pups can be invasive and difficult to remove, so I've included varieties that don't pup. These may initially cost a bit more, but they're well worth it over the long run. Agaves are hardy, for the most part, to the mid to high 20s, but a few go a lot lower. If an agave is notably frost hardy or frost tender, I'll mention it. I'm going to introduce you to some of my favorite landscape agaves. Most of these are best in the ground, but when small, any agave, or any succulent for that matter, can be in a pot. Agave Americana, 10 to 15 feet tall and about as wide, is commonly called century plant because it seems to take a century to bloom, although it actually flowers at about 15 to 25 years of age. Quicker if you pamper it, so be mean to your Agave Americana. Even small century plants thrive with no care at all. Like cactus, they don't mind frost, blazing sun, or poor soil. Plant them on rocky slopes where nothing else will grow and in any large area that receives little or no irrigation. That's what they're good for. Don't plant them next to your driveway or next to a sidewalk. Variegated forms of agave americana are beautiful. They include marginata, which is about eight feet tall and is wide, and white striped agave americana medio picta alba, the tuxedo agave, which only gets to three to four feet tall. Agave angustifolia marginata grows to about four feet tall and about as wide. It has long green and cream striped tapered leaves that give the plant a starburst shape. It's cold hardy to around 20 degrees Fahrenheit and is colony forming, meaning it pups. But the colonies are pretty, multiple starbursts. Agave attenuata to five feet tall and about as wide is common in gardens along the California coast and in Florida and Hawaii. Elsewhere, it needs protection from frost and sunburn. It's unusual among agaves in that it is trunk forming. Offsets that grow along the trunk eventually form a dense cluster. Smooth leaves have no vicious barbs and lack terminal spines. And the flower spike is tall, arching, and unbranched, giving it the common name foxtail agave. There are blue varieties, but they're uncommon. And there are also a half dozen or so variegates that are striped or streaked with yellow or cream. These seldom offset and they may sunburn if you don't protect them. Shown here in my YouTube video tour of my own garden, agave blue flames, flexible blue-green leaves have finely serrated edges and suggest the flames of a gas burner. Blue flame is medium-sized, growing to several feet in diameter. It's a cross between agave shawii and agave attenuata, both of which I've included in this video. 
Like agave attenuata, new rosettes form along the stem, which, like that of its showy eye parent, lies along the ground. One of the most popular landscape succulents is agave blue glow, which I think should have been named red glow because its leaves, which have painterly striations of green, blue, and gray, are margined and red. It's an excellent small agave to about three feet in diameter with a crisp silhouette of slender tapered leaves. For those of you who don't like weeding out pups, agave blue glow does not produce them. Tardy to 20 degrees. Agave bobby cornuta, to three feet tall and five feet wide, has broad, bright green leaves with prominent spines and bud imprints. It does not pup. Agave bracteosa grows to about three feet in diameter. Long, narrow, tapered leaves curl downward and lack spines. Center leaves that cling to each other have flat tips that give the plant a distinctive star-shaped center. Although it looks delicate, this is one of the more cold-hardy agaves to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. In my garden, it does not like full sun, dappled shade only. Agave chisum grows to about 3 feet in diameter. It's a cross of agave gypsophila, which I've included in this video, and thick-leaved, strongly-toothed agave colorata. It's not widely available, but given how gorgeous it is, I suspect that will soon change. Agave Cornelius' distinctive color and form make it unforgettable. This is Jeannie Meadow in her fabulous garden in Fallbrook, California. It's a nice small to medium size agave that has beautiful color. It never changes. It just it can take the cold. It can take the heat. This is west facing. It will give you pups that are very easy to pull off and share with other people. It's just one of my favorites. It is. I love the weighty edges on it. It is hardy to 15 degrees. Agave Desmetiana variegata grows to 2 feet tall and 3 feet wide. It has upright, gracefully curved leaves margined in yellow. It blooms and therefore dies early compared to other agaves at around 5 years. Well, hello Joe. Joe Hope at Waterwise Botanicals. Look at the late afternoon sun illuminating those variegated leaves. Several species of agave have white curly filaments along the leaf margins. Filamented agaves are eye-catching when backlit. When you're on the shady side of a filamented agave with the sun behind it, the plant lights up. Agave filifera, subspecies Shadigara, grows to about a foot high and one to two feet wide and is hardy to 15 to 20 degrees. Agave geminiflora gets two to three feet in diameter. One of Jeannie Meadows has come into bloom. It's going to take about a year for it to die all the way, and then at the, from the bottom up, we'll start to turn burgundy as well. And it's just going to be a gorgeous show of colors as it is dying. So it's, it's going to give us something special even when it's uh, going away. Agave Green Gola has broad, triangular, silvery leaves. It gets nearly as large as a century plant over time, but is a much better choice because it doesn't pup. Leaf margins are minimally serrated, so it's less treacherous, too. Use Agave Green Gola as a garden focal point, and if you have a large landscape, repeat it for dramatic effect. Agave Gypsophila has leaves that curl and twist with rick-rack margins. It's ornamental, doesn't get overly large, to about three feet in diameter, and is beautiful combined with other succulents in garden beds. Agave Lophantha quadricolor is visually dynamic. It's a variegate of a tough and hardy desert agave. It stays small, mature rosettes are only about 12 inches in diameter. When you have the right place for it, all those multiples are beautiful. Hardy to 15 degrees. Closely related to Agave Victoria Regina is Agave Nicelsiae. That's a name change. You probably know it by Agave Ferdinandi Regis, which has gray green leaves, white lines that appear drawn with chalk, and squiggly black tips. Hardy to 15 degrees and grows to 2 feet in diameter. Agave perii, Peri's agave, native to the desert southwest in Mexico, is highly heat tolerant, yet also among the most cold hardy of agaves, to minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Agave perii and its subspecies range from 18 inches to 2 feet or more. Agave perii truncata 
has broad oval leaves, grows to four feet in diameter, and is much less cold tolerant, unfortunately, than the species. It only goes down to maybe 15 degrees Fahrenheit. It's so beautiful, grown in multiples, and since it tends to offset, that's likely to happen. Agave ovatifolia somewhat resembles agave perii truncata, but agave ovatifolia is larger, six feet in diameter, light blue, and generally more showy, and it doesn't pup. Hardy to five degrees. Agave shark skin is one of my favorites because it's so tactile. It's a medium size, two to three feet in diameter agave, tough in the garden, and a conversation piece. Leaves have the texture of fine sandpaper and are noticeably thick and strong to 15 degrees. When backlit, the toothed edges of agave shawii glow pink, orange, yellow, and red. It's native to Baja California and will grow in desert gardens if given afternoon shade. It handles drought and poor soil, grows slowly to three feet across, and is colony forming. It produces offsets from stems that lie along the ground. Agave tequilana, also known as tequila agave or Weber's blue agave, is farmed by the tens of thousands in Mexico. It makes a handsome landscape plant with slender pointed blue-gray leaves that are striking in silhouette. It grows to five feet tall and six feet wide. Give it room, it pups. Agave Victoria Regine, the Queen Victoria agave, is cold hardy to 10 degrees Fahrenheit and seldom produces offsets. It has tight artichoke-like symmetry and leaves detailed with white lines. It grows to 18 inches in diameter over time. After 20 or so years, it produces a tall, skinny bloom spike. Not much to look at. It's kind of a bittersweet event when it happens because you get to see something cool and rare and unusual, but you're gonna lose a truly magnificent plant. Agave Vilmoriniana, five feet tall, hardy to the low 20s, has narrow guttered leaves that undulate as though swept by an ocean current, hence the common name octopus agave. Because leaf edges lack teeth, it's considered a soft agave. The species is solitary, but plantlets do form abundantly along the bloom spike. Look for the yellow-striped variegate, Agave vilmariniana stained glass. With its minimally serrated margins and graceful tapered leaves, Agave weberi is an elegant agave. It's better behaved than the Americanas that it resembles, being less inclined to offset but it is slightly more sensitive to weather extremes. It needs afternoon shade in the heat of summer, grows six feet tall and up to 10 feet wide. When pruning an agave, if you cut it to a V, an upside down V, that resembles its natural tip, you don't even notice that it's been trimmed. Or I cut it all the way back to the trunk. A straight across cut at a leaf's midsection ruins the plant's symmetry. Do avoid getting sap on your skin as it may cause an allergic reaction. You have to watch your agaves and you have to treat them for snout weevil because this is what happens. The snout weevil is a little beetle that gets into an agave. Ew! Ew! Oh, that's disgusting. Agave snout nose weevil is an increasingly common pest that destroys agaves and related species such as mangaves, bocarnias, and yuccas. Fortunately, it can be prevented and, if caught early, treated. Learn more on my website's Agave Snout Weevil page. Find labeled photos of this video's agaves in my book, Designing with Succulents, and on the agave page of my website, DeborahLeeBaldwin.com. Be sure to watch my YouTube channel's agave playlist, click subscribe, and like if you do. And please know I always welcome your comments and questions.